Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Caroline Mithi, a physician and a budding endocrinologist. In this channel, we talk about medical topics that are relevant to you and to just share medical knowledge to you. So welcome. Today's topic is an interesting topic that I get asked a lot. Is this thyroid swelling cancer? The thyroid gland is a gland and it's a small organ that sits at the front of the neck, as you can see. It measures around 20 grams in an adult, and it has two sides. It has the left side and the right side, and it's separated in the middle by a small fibrous tissue called the isthmus. In a normal person, this gland is not seen and should not be seen. What is the relevance of this small organ in our bodies? So this organ, produces very essential hormones called the thyroid hormones, which are two, that's the T3 and T4. So these thyroid hormones increases the metabolic rate in our body, help in every other activity or every other organ in our body, starting from the heart. So it makes our heart beat well and beat strongly. It makes us sharp in our brain activity. And so what happens if these hormones are low in your body. The patient will present with slowness of speech, slowness of thinking, you'll feel sluggish, you'll feel tired, you'll feel down or depressed, you will have weight gain even when you're not eating much, and you will have accumulation of water or fluid in your legs and in your body. When these hormones are high and they're not regulated well, what happens is fuel is basically increased in your body. So you're sweaty, you're anxious, your heart beats very fast and you can feel your heart beat through your clothes and your brain is foggy. You have weight loss even when you eat well and you will have even episodes like diarrhea because everything is at an all time fast. So what happens if the thyroid gland goes awry? There is development of a thyroid swelling, what we call a thyroid nodule. Remember, thyroid nodules are common in the normal population and 90 to 95% of these thyroid swellings are actually non-cancerous or what we call benign. Only 5 to 10% of these thyroid nodules are cancerous, but then all thyroid nodules need to be evaluated. So what happens if a person comes in and they have a thyroid swelling? Key note, you have to present to a nearest health facility where a direct clinical examination and a history will be taken. And at this point, there are several risk factors that we check to see is, is there a swelling, cancer or not. So the main risk factors to development of direct cancers is this. Um, radiation, especially in childhood, to the neck region radiation to the head or radiation to the chest. The second predisposing factor is family history. If you have anyone in your family, especially a first degree relative who has had thyroid cancer, then you're likely to getting thyroid cancer. Another predisposing factor is being female. So women are three times more likely to develop thyroid cancer than their male counterparts. Age, if you're around 40 to 60 years of age, that is a high risk time to developing cancer of the thyroid gland. And so that has to be checked. The other presupposed causes that have been shown to increase the risk of thyroid cancer, and these include smoking, alcohol, or low iodine diets. So what are the symptoms you look out for? Uh, for thyroid cancer, you need to be aware the majority of patients will actually not present with any symptoms. Another large population will present with thyroid swelling and it will be painless or it will have pain. The other symptom patients will present with hoarseness of voice, especially if uh, the thyroid gland is pressing on the larynx or the voice box. Patients will also present with a difficulty in swallowing. The reason of that is behind the thyroid gland sits the trachea or the windpipe. And so when the thyroid gland is big, it compresses on the windpipe and this can cause a difficulty in breathing and difficulty in swallowing when it compresses the food pipe or the esophagus. 
we have gone through the risk factors, we've gone through the symptoms that you presented with to the facility. So the doctor at this point or the clinician will send you for some tests to diagnose and to see is this swelling cancer or not. The first test that they'll send you for is an ultrasound of the thyroid gland or of the neck. So this ultrasound will tell us some very pertinent and important points. When do you have one swelling, that's one nodule, or many nodules? And what is the character of the nodules? And this will also point to us, is it cancer or is it not? The second test the clinician will send you for is a radio iodine uptake scan. And this is where you're given a dye and to see whether that nodule will take up the dye or not. The diagnostic test of choice is FNA, what we call a fine needle aspirate with cytology. And this is best done under ultrasound guidance. The procedure is that a small needle is put in the thyroid nodule and some tissue is taken and taken to the lab. With this, the lab is able to tell us is this cancer or not. If it's cancer, it will likely be in one of four different categories. The first category could be papillary direct cancer. This is the commonest type of cancer that we see in the direct gland. The second category will be follicular direct cancer. The third will be anaplastic or undifferentiated direct cancer. And the fourth will be medullary direct carcinoma. So if you had a family member who had cancer of the direct, likely the cancer that you'll have is the fourth category, which is medullary direct cancer. The commonest treatment that you will be sent for or the patient will be sent for, if indeed we find that it's direct cancer, the treatment of choice is surgery. So in this surgery, the surgical procedure that we'll do is called a thyroidectomy and it can be total or partial. Likely, if it's cancer, that will be total. And the meaning of this is they will go and remove both the left and the right side of the thyroid gland, and they will remove it in totality. Remember, the thyroid gland is important to produce hormones. So once the thyroid gland is removed, at this point, uh, you're given the thyroid hormone in form of tablets, and this you'll take for life. The other modalities of treatment that we do and that we give, if indeed the thyroid cancer has spread, include radiation therapy and chemotherapy. This in summary is thyroid cancers and our take home is this. One, not all thyroid swellings are cancer. Indeed, only a small percentage is cancer. That's around five to 10% will be cancerous, but all thyroid swellings have to be evaluated because of that small percentage that could be cancer. Two, it's important to do a quick neck examination and I'm going to take you through that. Remember we said that the red gland is a small organ. On naked eye, it is not visible unless it is enlarged or unless it is swollen. So run your hands down both the left and the right side, starting from the Adam's apple all the way down and swallow. If you feel a mass both on the left or on the right side, especially when you're swallowing or if the person in front of you tells you that they can see something moving up just below your Adam's ankle, then suspect a thyroid swelling and have it checked. So thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Until next time, God bless.